Welcome back. We're talking about the assumptions of the classical linear regression model. Although we haven't really talked about them yet, we're getting into some preliminaries. But let me illustrate the um, unbiased and the um, minimum variance estimator, sometimes what people would call the efficient estimator. Using a little picture here, uh, I'm very oriented towards learning and visualizing things and, and pictures like this and so hopefully this will help you understand these these ideas we were talking about and so suppose we wanted to estimate a slope now here I have uh, a pretty high-tech drawing of just kidding of a uh, dartboard and suppose our goal is to try to figure out where the bullseye is right here in the middle is the bullseye and you can think about estimating the true slope as trying to collect data, analyze it, and try to figure out where the bullseye is. And so think about yourself as, as collecting data and estimating a slope. Each time someone collects data and tries to figure out what the real slope is, what's the real relationship between education and income, for example, what you would like is that each time you collect a random sample of data and you get a randomly generated estimate of the slope, what you would like to happen is for uh, your estimates to look something like this. Let's see, let's put some little red dots here. So one person collects some data and estimates another person, another person, another person. And sometimes your estimates are too high, sometimes they're too low. But in general, they're, they're pretty close to the target, what you're really hoping to find, the true slope, or the bullseye in this case. So these red dots might represent an estimator, a technique of finding the true slope that is pretty accurate, pretty close to the truth most of the time, uh, and also unbiased, because on average, you know, you're, you're, you're right. Sometimes you're too high. Sometimes you're too low, sometimes you're just right. Uh, there's a joke about statisticians hunting. Uh, two statisticians go hunting in the woods, and one person shoots at a deer and misses to the right. The other statistician quickly grabs his rifle and shoots to the left of the deer. And they say, well, on average, we got him. But this is just the, the way things happen in statistics, is you're never going to be perfectly right. You're going to be a little too high, a little to the left, a little too low. And so on average, unbiasedness means on average these results are clustered around the right answer. Efficiency or minimum variance means that they're all pretty close to the right answer. Now you might have a different situation where you're trying to estimate a slope and I'll use blue here where you might be efficient, very low variance of your estimates, but what happens when you collect data and you estimate uh, low variance, but what's happening? Well, on average, your answers are not right. They're not, on average, equal to where the bullseye is. This is what biased looks like. Biased means, on average, your answers are off the mark, but this would still be an example of low variance. So your, your aiming is accurate but you're aiming at the wrong thing, right? So that's an example of biased but low variance. Now, on the other hand, you might be inefficient or have a high variance estimator that is um, unbiased. So here's what that might look like. Okay, well, on average, we're right with these kind of pinkish purple dots. On average, we're right, but our answers are pretty far off the mark. Not in a predictable biased way like the blue dots. On average we're right and on average you know every rare once in a while we'll get close to the truth but uh, this is inefficient or a high variance estimator. And so sometimes you have to make a choice between two different estimators. Now we're not going to go into this in detail in this course but this is an idea in an introductory course that you you need to appreciate is that sometimes 
we're forced to make a choice between two ways of trying to estimate a relationship. One way is to use an estimator like the pinkish purple ones here that have a high variance, meaning that they're not all that close to the target, but on average um, they will be close to the target. Now you can compensate for having a high variance in your estimators uh, with what we usually call the law of large numbers by getting a larger sample size. If you get a bigger sample size then um, your accuracy uh, will, your, your variance of your estimates will go down. And so you can, you can make this purple uh, cloud tighter and tighter around the bullseye by getting larger sample sizes. Uh, so you can fix that, but uh, sometimes you'll have to choose between something that is unbiased, like the purple, but has a high variance, and something that is biased, but has a low variance, very tight grouping like the blue. Now, why might you want to pick something that is biased, but has a low variance? It might be the case that you can get an idea of what the bias looks like about how large it is and also in what direction it is. So for example you might be interested in trying to make sure that, let me change colors here and, and uh, draw another shape. Let me uh, use a yellow here. You might be trying to find evidence that um, a variable or a relationship is not in uh, this re region here, this yellow region, right? Because if uh, the relationship is in this yellow region, there's going to be some problem, okay? And so if you used a high variance estimator, like the pinkish purple estimator, you might, you know, some of your estimates are going to make you think that you are in that region over here, right? Some of these purple dots are going to get in the yellow region and you're going to say, oh my gosh, maybe there's a problem where we're in this trouble spot. However, um, you might in that case say, well, let's get a, a an estimate that has a very uh, low variance but is biased. Maybe even one that's biased toward the yellow, right? So if the truth was here, uh, or you think it might be there, you want to make sure it's not in the yellow, then you might use this green estimator, which you know is biased, and it's biased toward that yellow area. If you get an estimate, even though you know it's biased, toward the yellow, then you can be pretty sure that the truth is to the left of the green, and so the truth is not in the yellow. Now, I guess I've digressed a bit here and, and spent a lot of time on this, but hopefully you get a basic idea of, of the trade-off that can be involved in some cases. And indeed, we will see later on, uh, there's something called multicollinearity. And multicollinearity increases the variance of the estimates. They're not biased, but they're going to be, uh, your estimates will be likely to be far away from the truth but not in a biased way. There's an easy way to fix multicollinearity sometimes but it will bias your estimates. But it'll bias them in a direction that sometimes you can predict. And so understanding these basic ideas and, and some of the trade-offs involved will aid you in making some of these very difficult choices. So now that we're done with this graphical uh, view of biased and um, efficiency or minimum variance. Now we're prepared to tackle and look at these assumptions of the classical linear model one by one and see why, basically what they are and why they're important.